All right, I know it's been a second since we had a video about a week. And, you know, that's primarily because I don't have as much time nowadays. You know, no longer the Christmas season, so I'm back to work myself, you know. Gotta finance this reactor somehow. So, um, I, I pretty much have, like, what, two hours a day on the weekdays to work on it. So that's really all it is, but it's slower progress, but it's still progress, so... I've had another excellent suggestion from one of you guys, actually. And this is concerning my issue with the microwave diet problem I've been having, um, where I was talking about at the end of my last video, how I've tried every type of adhesive that I've known of, um, even things like extreme heat JB well, 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, and they all have failed. And that's simply because microwaves they work in a very, very specific way. There's many different types of materials concerning microwaves. There's microwave reflectors, like metal. Microwave absorbers, like almost everything that's organic. And then there's such things as microwave transparent materials, like the mica sheet itself, like glass, like some types of plastic, where they let microwaves go through. So basically, microwaves, they're relentless, right? They don't show mercy. That's why we use them to break down the bloody plastics, right? Because what happens is the microwaves, they go in there atomically, all right? They're going into the material atomically, and they're making the atoms vibrate a million times per second. So anything that remotely has a chance of staying together is going to get absolutely denatured and pulled apart. I mean, just think about it. I'm sure if you were vibrating from the inside out, you'd get pretty hot too, wouldn't you? So anyways, that is why the key is we need a material, an adhesive material, that is either microwave reflective or microwave transparent. And I have everything I've tested, silicone, like RCV silicone, right? That's microwave transparent. So it would never break off or flake off under the microwave, but what happened was it would end up peeling off of the, the waveguide sheet and just coming off and it would leave a giant hole where the gases would escape. But we can solve that because this viewer made the excellent suggestion of I should make almost like a flange, a metal flange, four bolts that go in and, and compress it up against the mica sheet. And so as you saw, I made the, the basically the flange for the mica sheet and it works really well. I ran the reactor many, many times because, you know, usually what would happen is it would work the first hour, then it would degrade after the second hour. That type of thing. Work the first one, break it the second. But this one, I've ran the reactor like three or four times. It's held up great. So I think that this is the solution. So thank you so much for that suggestion. However, you know, with problems... When you solve problems, you know, you find another problem, and another problem was when I made that airtight, the gasket started leaking. Now, here's the thing about this gasket I've been using. This gasket, it's made of a rope. It's a rope gasket. Now, what's the issue with these rope gaskets? Well, they're only airtight. They're not liquid tight, which is kind of a weird thing, right? Like, how does that work? But that's how it works, okay? So, what would happen was... It would be, sometimes it would be completely airtight, sometimes it wouldn't, but the times when it would be completely airtight... There would be oils running down the side of the reactor just out of nowhere. And it would just be like, what the heck is going on? I didn't understand it. Because I'm like, it's airtight. How in the world are oils leaking? Like, that should be easy money, right? We need a new gasket material. And that's a really tough thing because the gasket material has to be high temperature. It has to be resistant to hydrocarbons and gasoline and microwave resistant. You know how rare of a combination that is? Because things like silicone are high temperature and corrosion resistant and microwave transparent. But the minute a hydrocarbon or gasoline or oil hits it, it starts to just fall apart. So I'm like, what can I do? I had to use an automotive gasket, right? But the issue with them is they're so thin. Like, it's pretty much like sandpaper. Like, you, you have to have a really good metal-to-metal -metal kiss. You know, the metal needs to be making out with the other side of metal, pretty much, for this to fit in there. So I had to pretty much build some spacer rings on the reactor, weld some spacer rings on it, to get it to get to the point where it was close enough seal. And as you see, this is the process of putting it together. Now, I had to cut out these circles with a uh, angle grinder. Why? Because in the middle of me cutting them out with the plasma torch, it went out, and the electrode just got destroyed. And 
there's no more electrodes, so I had to get creative, had to go Tarzan on them, and had to cut it out with an angle grinder, which is a, a kind of pretty much a paradox. Cutting out a circle with something that only cuts straight angles. I mean, come on now. I made it work, though. It was kind of tough, but, you know, whatever. They don't have to be perfect. They just need to be, you know, need to do the job. After I cut out all of the circles, you know, I only... They're pretty much hollow on the inside, right? So I was left with all these nice tasty metal pizzas right and i'm a generous person i'm a very charitable guy okay if you want a pizza come get one all right i got more than i can have myself all right you want one you want one no uh you, you sure are you sure you don't want no okay fine i'll take it myself thing gosh dang it i just try to be nice around here and nobody ever works with me all right whatever most importantly they need to be flat so every time i cut them out and i grind them you know they warp a little bit every time i will the two together they warp a little bit because what I did is I would stack two together so that way that's even less space you know they're taking up even more of the gap so I, I put two per side um, and I just welded two into one giant ring and when I would weld them they would warp a little bit so I'd have to put them under this torch here and you know do some blacksmithing take them to the table hit them until they were flat because we need these things to be you know uh, kissing really well for this gasket to even work so after that uh, it was time to weld the whole thing together, like, to the reactor itself, and that process, it was a very tedious welding process. First of all, the angles were horrible to weld. Who wants to weld this type of circle from the inside and the outside? It sucked. Real big nuts, alright? But, we got it done. Had to weld the inside, had to weld the outside. Took, up like, an hour and 30 minutes total to weld the whole thing, just because... Like, some points you have to go slow, some points you have to go fast, some points it wants to blow through, some points it doesn't. So I was not worried about it, whether it looked good or not, okay? Half the time, I don't give a river's damn how my welds look. I only care about functionality, and that was my only focus, just to make sure that it was a seal, and there were no gaps, and that that metal was, you know, staying flat. And since I put this big reactor up under it, you know, it was pretty much acting as a heat sink for the, the metal spacer rings, so they weren't warping anymore, which is excellent. So, yeah, that's what I did, and we got it done, and... Alright, here we have it, fruits of my labor. Really, you can't really see a difference between this and the last reactor. Well, it's the same reactor, but it's upgrade, right? It looks almost the exact same, but there's this ring around it. You it from the inside and the outside, and this ring basically just acts as like a spacer and there's an equivalent ring on this uh, this this lid same thing acts as a spacer um and this will allow me to use a gasket which can actually resist the gasoline and the high temperatures and the oils because you see this gasket is pretty thin here so previously the amount of space i had between the lid and this, it was too much dead space for this type of gasket to even come close to working right. But nowadays, with this new system, this gasket will work. And this is basically just, this is actually technically two gaskets put together because one was just super thin and I didn't think it would work. So what I did was, you know, this is the size of one right here. This is the, 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 the thickness of one. It's quite thin. So I just took two together and I took some oil resistant high temperature silicone and I just put it between them. And I just let it set overnight with like weights pressing on top of them to keep them nice and firm together. You can see some of it there. And the hope is that this will be enough to um, completely seal it. And that high temperature silicone, since it's so little surface area of it will be in contact with any oil or any gas or anything, it more than likely will not degrade. But if it does, you know, the compressional force against this alone will technically be enough to hold the two gaskets together and make a seal but you know we just wanted to be safer than sorry um i just hope that i don't have any leaks in my welds at this point because you know that would be annoying at this point because this it was quite a bit of welding to do this but you know how welding is you can weld for like many many hours just to mess up on one weld and then you have a leak there so we really won't know that until we get there but right now i'm gonna you know tighten this down and i want to see if the gasket will get compressed so yeah all right so we got her completely tightened down as much as she go with the, the um, impact driver and the only way to know is just to test her out so that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna go ahead we already have some plastic loaded in there we're gonna turn this baby on 
and see how it works. Oh, we also gotta hook up all the pipes too. Damn, I forgot about that. It's been so long. But yeah, let's do it. All right, she's been running for a little bit of time. There's no real true way to melt absolutely is the, if the whole thing is airtight other than like taking a spray bottle with dish soap and spraying it around all the leaks, which I'm not doing right now, you know, maybe another day. But my best sign is this balloon over here. So as you can see, it's pretty full. It's pretty big too. And it's continuing to grow. Now this is a great test to see because... You know, as you know, as the balloon gets bigger and bigger, it gets harder and harder to push air in there because the pressure is rising, right? So for the, this balloon here to be, uh, you know, decent size, it shows that despite how much pressure may be in that balloon, there's more pressure in this reactor. So the gas rather go through all of this and go to the, um, then, then stay in the reactor, right? So it rather go through all this and go into the balloon, which is a zone of relatively high pressure, than stay in there or leak out anywhere because that's the thing if there are leaks in the reactor why would it want to go through all of this complex condensed system and into this high pressure balloon when they can just leave out a leak right so i assume and i hypothesize that because we have we have no argon pumping currently and this is just purely the pyrolysis gas itself filling up this balloon that you know it's pretty good in terms of you know being airtight Maybe not completely airtight. In fact, I doubt that. But it's a pretty good amount. So, yeah, I mean, that's a really big deal to me because, you know, a major part of this is that it's airtight. You can't really continue on with it. You know, so now what I can do next to make it better is, you know, tighten down the joints, put Teflon tape between all the pipes, that type of stuff. Once I figure out the best configuration of the condensing system for oil collection and put insulation on stuff, um, and, uh, yeah, I'll do some, some of the other tips and advice that you guys gave me. i just been so focused on getting it airtight because, like, that's one of the biggest parts of this reactor. So we have the actual reactor itself airtight, and now we have the waveguide sheet cover airtight as well. In fact, you can see some of the screws I put in there sticking up from the top of the reactor on the other side. And those are sealed with silicone. Because since, you know, even though silicone is degraded by the hydrocarbons, they're not t in contact with it at all. So it's been working perfectly. And that gasket seems to be working perfectly. It's meant for gasoline and oils and it's high temperature. So, I mean, it looks like we got it it's good. So now I can really just take the time to focus on purifying the gas, purifying the oils, getting the oils, getting the gas, pressurizing the gas, storing it, all that type of good stuff I really just wanted to do from the beginning. I mean... So I just wanted to let everybody know, I really do appreciate all the suggestions and advice, and I look at every single one, and I consider it, and I will be doing them. I just had to really focus on this, getting this completely airtight. Um, one viewer recommended that I could take the gases that I catch in the balloon and use them to heat up the bottom of the reactor, which is absolutely genius, because then that would get rid of the... Um, the, the plastics that the microwaves couldn't penetrate to. And there's also some other ideas that I'm really looking into doing. Like I want to try to put a magnetron on the side or put a magnetron at the bottom. See if it changes stuff. See if it penetrates better. And I want to, you know, build a gasometer, which is a way of storing the gas. A low pressure way to store it, which is when you have a bottomless container um, slide that slides into a container that is full of water. And it, it will store the gas and then it will push itself up. Um, against the water and then from that maybe I could compress it or something but you know the point is it's just going to take a little bit of time now because I don't have much time to work on this but we'll do it over time and I see all the suggestions I appreciate them and thank you so much for watching see you next time